Hi everyone and welcome to a new video series and we will continue with the system identification. This is example number one about a first order system. And of course we will look at that calculation step by step and we will simulate our system using MATLAB and then we will verify our calculations. So let's look at that example. What we have is the following situation. We have a transient response of a system. We don't know yet what it is exactly. We have an input signal given, RT, and that is a step input with a, which has an amplitude of 10. That's the red line. We have the output, which is given in black here, and that is our response. So from these two graphs, two data, we will, look, we will like to determine the transfer function of the system. So there's a system, something, it goes in, this red line it goes out, this black line. And the time scale in this curve is in seconds. So how do we start? What do we do actually if you have a curve like this? So let's look at the solution step by step. So first observations from the graph. Let's look at the output specifically. I see from the output graph that the, the starting point of my graph, this, has a slope which is larger than zero. And the shape also has a, a increasing, but it will not increase as fast as it is, and it will settle at some point. So this, this slope at the origin and also the shape will give me the following information. I see from the slope, which is non-zero, which is then actually increasing, that will give me actually the following information. This system is a first order system. Because a second order and higher order system, will have a slope which is zero here and then it will go up and then gradually come to a if it's of course a system a stable system to a, a final value so this is a, a further system probably because the shape and also the the slope of the system uh, response at the at the origin is non-zero well i also see the steady state value is eight that is one of another observation from this plot and I also see at some specific time, six seconds, I have a value of 5.04. So that's actually what we have. That's actually also what we will use these data to determine the transfer function. That is actually important. So the transfer function model in general for this system, since we have assumed the first order system, and we assume also it is just all poles. So we have only poles, no zeros, no delay. Then we have the following model h is equal to the kdc which is the dc gain of your system over one plus tau s now what is this kdc kdc is actually the steady state gain specifically so remember it is not the value steady state gain or the dc gain of your system we will use this shortly this gain is not eight that will be clear why that is the tau is a time constant that is a specific characteristics of our system and that will be determined using this graph also so we have the kdc and also the tau so let's look specifically to this system and then determine the transfer function so let's do first for the dc gain dc gain will be determined by this formula kdc is equal to the final value of the output divided by the final value of the input that's a very general formula so what we have is then the final value of the output is 8 the final value of the input is 10, so you will actually do the final value of the output divided by the final value of the input is just 8 over 10, 8 over 10, 0 0.8. That is the gain. Remember, that will not change. This gain will not change, but this value can change the output response if you make this, of course, larger or smaller. So if I make this 1, for example, not 10, 1, then this will be, of course, 10 times smaller. And that's not what we actually will use as the DC gain specifically so if i make this five so the red line then this will be of course four so we will have two times a smaller steady state value so it is literally following the output the input but the gain of my system is always 0 0.8 that's one of the parameters we need to determine the next one is a time constant and time constants can be determined using the graph and i will just start with a general graph what we have is the following plot which is a general unit step actually response we have this red line which is the curve of a first order system you can see the tau 
the two tau, three tau, four tau, and five tau. These are just uh, time locations. At one tau, which is of course important for our model, you can see that the system reaches 62% approximately of the final value. If this is final value one, then you will have 0.63 times one, that's exactly 0.63, a little bit larger, but that's uh, fine for this example. So 0.63 of that one. So what you actually then need to do is you take this final value, you, you will determine the 63% of that one, and you will then look at the graph at what time that will happen. That will give you your time uh, for your tau, the time constant. There is another way. You can also look at the slope from the origin. So you will actually make a tangent line at this point at the slope and if you make this tangent line also crossing with this steady state line the final value line this intersection will also give you the time constant by looking at the time scale so there are two ways in this case or of course another way maybe so that is not really interesting but we can do the the easiest way in most cases if you know the graph then you can determine the time constant by looking at the 63% approximately from the steady state value. So if I also do that, 63% of my, of our response, which is 8, so 0 0.63 times the final value, 0 0.63 times 8, that will give you 5.04. That is specific, of course, chosen for that exercise. And now we, we see that at that value, I need to determine my time constant, that is in this case 6. So my tau is six seconds so the time constant for this system is six of course if i had determined or given for example at six seconds it was three or five different or eight something which is not the time constant then of course i need to determine another point and it will of course give me the time constant or i have to do that in a different form but it is specific done to see the time constant directly so most of the time, of course, it will be ha handy if you determine this first and then look at your time and not first the time and then look at the value. So then we have the following situations. Determine the KDC and also the tau. I have this. So I just substitute the values in here. I have then 0 0.8 over 1 plus 6s. I can, of course, convert this in this form by dividing the numerator and denominator by 6. Then I can see the pole directly because the pole is now at minus 6, mi minus 1 over 6. So you can see. 2 over 15, because the 0 0.8 divided by 8, uh, 0 0.8 divided by 6 will give you 2 over 15. And I have a pole of minus 1 over 6, and that will be 6 plus 1 over 6 in the denominator. And that will be, of course, used also in our simulations. So let's look at the next step, just the simulation results. Transit response, and then specifically the step response. That's actually what we have. What I have done here is I have applied a input signal step input with an amplitude of 10 and i get again this was the response we had given so the amplitude must be 10. i had now this transfer function we know already and you can see that the value of my response at time equals to 6 is 5.06 i had 5.04 so it is close so it is uh, this is of very accurate to what we had in our uh, exercise given i also see the final value is eight so that is also correct because the final value we have given was also eight so we can see that this is really confirming what we have given here and that this model will do the job you can also look at the body plot that will also give you a lot of information what you see is the gain here the first one on top and this is the uh, the phase or the gain is the amplitude actually of your system and this is the phase of your system which, and this is the transfer function which you see this is very important you can see at very low frequency it is actually DC uh, for practical sense this the frequency at 0 0.01 let's say DC we have a magnitude of minus 1.95 dB now if you convert this to scalar value that will give you 0 0.8 so this value is important because if I use this value and I will look at this uh, frequency, which is then actually the frequency which I think that must be the cutoff frequency that will be determined by this, which is 1 over that value, that is actually 0 
one six seven so that is the cutoff frequency why because if i go with the magnitude 3 db down that's actually the definition of the cutoff frequency so if i go from minus 1.95 db to minus 4.95 db which is just 4 3 db decrease then i see that the frequency is now at 0 0.167 radians per second and that is exactly one of i need to not exactly of course but that is close to one over six as my pole so that's actually a confirmation you can also see that from the phase plot at the same frequency i can see that the phase is minus 45 degrees and this is a characteristic of a first order system if you have a first order system all pole of course then you will have a phase shift of minus 45 degrees at that cutoff frequency if there's of course a low pass filter characteristics that's actually what we have so this will also confirm our results and we will see this also in real time when we do the simulation in MATLAB in the next step. So let's jump to MATLAB. So we continue with the MATLAB simulation. What we have is the following. I have made a script, very small script, system identification for example number one. First, I have defined the Laplace parameter S here, which is shown here. I have defined that as S is equal to transfer function of S. And then there's a definition. These are the parameters of my system. We have determined we have the KDC, that's actually our DC gain of the system. And we have also determined the tau, which is then our time constant. So it is six and for the KDC, it was 0 0.8. So this is the model of our first order system. And it was given by H is equal to KDC over one plus tau S. That's just a very general formula. So I will now run this script and then I will determine the uh, result here from step response and then we will check what's happening. So let's run this. The system identification example number one is now running. I will now do first H just check what's actually my system 0 0.8 over 6s plus 1. So this is actually what we had determined also in our calculation. So that's okay. You can also see that in a more you can also see that in different form in the zero pole uh, conditions so the zero pole gain format so let's look at it also and what you see is then the pole here is at 0 0.1 i mean the gain at, at this uh, for this part at, at the denominator the numerator is 2 over 15 and you can see that the pole was one minus one over six and it is actually what you also see here. So the S plus 0 0.1668 is actually give you the pole. So this is actually very really, uh, easy to see from this to that. That's actually what we have now here. And I will now do the step. So that will give me, of course, the step response. And I will do that, of course, 10 times my my system because the amplitude was 10 so if i just give you this step h only then i will only look at a unit step response because i need of course the step input of 10 so that's actually what you do 10 times at h okay then run maybe also put a grid on that is also fine so grid on and let's look at what it, what, what's doing So this is then the plot what we have. This is then the response. And if I now make the, determine the steady state value in here, you can see, I will make it larger. You can see that the steady state value or the final value is eight. That's actually what we also had. You can also determine the value at six seconds. So this is the time. Let me also make this larger. So you can see that this time is now here and the amplitude is given here. So if I make this larger, go to six seconds six seconds approximately yeah that's a bit difficult we are almost there let me redo this it was not a success at the first round yes i will make this larger 
So you can see at 6, I have an amplitude of 5.06. And the final value again, make it also larger, a little bit in the way. So we have a final value of 8. So you can see this is very close to 5.04 in our plot uh, initially. So it is really confirming what we had in our uh, given value in, in fr from the uh, system model. So that's actually our confirmation for our system using also in MATLAB. All right, this for example number one. We will continue, of course, with different examples. So if you have questions or comments, please let me know. And I will see you next time. Thanks and take care.